Yes, student. So today we are going to start with the new topic that is known as Z transformation. We have come across uh, Laplace transformation previously. This is uh, generalization of Z transformation. What we say? Yes, students. Here we have uh, Z transformation plays an important role in discrete analysis and may be seen as a discrete analog of Laplace transform. Yes, this is a generalization or a larger part of Laplace transformation. This Z transformation in a discrete analysis is the same as that of Laplace transform and uh, Fourier transform. This is a continuation system, what we're saying. Yes, so we'll go with the definition. Uh, if the function un is taken here, students, okay, we'll just consider this un as some discrete value, okay, where n is equal to 0, 1, 2, and so on is there. And un is equal to 0 for n less than 0. Then its z transform is defined as z of un is equal to, here we have u of z, which is equal to summation n 0 to infinity un z raised to minus n. So keeping in this in mind, so everywhere we are using this definition or we also consider this as formula for our examples to solve the examples. So you can just see whenever the infinite series converges students. So you can just see where is this larger part so from Fourier transformation and Laplace transformation. This is a generalized uh, form of Z transform. You can see here this is extended towards infinitely and this how this infinite series is there students please remember this is convergence convergence means somewhere it is going to end this infinite series somewhere it is going to converges then we are going to say this series is convergent so you can just see z transform is a complex valued function of complex variable yes students here in this mathematics we also study complex variables, complex functions we study. Yes, friends, we are going to calculate this complex valued functions. So we say that Z transformation exists only when the infinite series is convergent. So please keep this some of the points you have to remember. Okay. And then we say Z of UN is equal to summation N zero to infinity UN Z raised to minus N, which is the definition of Z transformation is termed as one side transform and for two side z transform is given by z of un is equal to summation n infinity to infinity u n z raised to minus n so as i was telling you that this is extended towards infinity to infinity please remember this transformation is done infinitely yes you can just see around you yes earth is going to get the transforms Yes, you have seen already so many technologies are getting transformed. So all the, it is infinite. Yes, but one day it is going to get constant or convergent. So that day will come definitely. You will just see how the transformation takes place in this Z transformation. So this Z transformation is used to convert discrete time domain into complex frequency domain where discrete time domain represents an order of complex or real number. It is generalized form of Fourier transform. This transformation is used in many applications of mathematics and signal processing, also digital filters nowadays. Yes, students, you can just see, I'm just giving a brief idea about Z transformation before starting the topic Z transformation, or we are going to start solving the problems. You should know why we are studying this. Yes or no, being an engineer, we should be thinking that why we are studying this topic, why it is useful, where we are going to use this, all these things you have should come in your mind and you will be knowing that by studying this Z transformation, this will help to you to convert discrete time domain into complex frequency domain, where you can just see time is very, very important nowadays. Now we're going to take this as the discrete time domain to represent a complex or real number. So we just seen, as time passes, you will complete your degree, you will get the job, right? Convert your time into success. This is very, very important. Time is given for everyone. How you transform and get the success is in your hand. Yes, same way here also. We just see Z transformation, how it is going to convert discrete time domain into complex 
frequency domain and which is also very good application in mathematics and signal processing yes students you can just i'll just show you one two examples on this um, how this has been used nowadays uh, here i have yes this is just simple to you to understand this how discrete system this is used in z transform so you are getting input here okay so next you are going to have this transformation and y n is going to so same way you are going to get the degree you are going to transform yourself getting the knowledge and you are going to get a job so this is how the transformation takes place then we we have the direct z transformation here students as i told you this is from infinite to infinite same way we have this signals yes they are the direct signals we can just see and we are going to calculate this by z transformation friends okay so we will go with our examples this is just a brief idea yes uh, we will go with the our results yes please anyone who has on the mm, this one i'm getting disturbed okay okay thank you so now we will find the results on z transformation of standard sequences so uh, as i told you that everything i will be telling you and later we will be focusing on what is important for our study and for our exam purpose friends okay so please write down the results on z transformation so this is the standard and also we are using this as a formula also students so please remember this this standard sequences we are using this as a formula also okay students so please write down results on z transformations of standard sequences so here we have z of mm -hmm. is it yes z of a raised to n is equal to z upon z minus a student so we will just see how we will simplify this okay so please write down now so here we go it's a very very important example students so i will be using the definition so by definition of z transform here we have z of u n is equal to u of z or we take z of u n is nothing but summation n 0 to infinity u n z is to minus n so so why i am taking only the one part it is a positive part i am taking right negative part is just a opposite in direction but we always take it in positive part okay so i will take this definition i will substitute wherever u n is there i am going to put an so simple example they have given i am going to just put u n is equal to an so let us see what i get here this is z of an i am substituting this formula let's note it so therefore this is summation n 0 to infinity just i am going to put here an instead of un i have just substituted an student that's it that is the work i have done here remaining terms i have kept it as it is okay now we will simplify this so this is equal to i will take this as now summation n 0 to infinity for my simplification what i do here you can just see in the right hand side i am going to write an z raised to minus n is there right i want to club this or i want to join this therefore i will just write it in terms of like this that is z raised to minus n is there divided by a raised to minus n what i have done just i have taken this a raised to plus n divide i have taken in the denominator which is going to become a raised to minus n or i will just for my simplification i will write this as z upon a raised to minus n so just i will simplify that z upon a raised to minus n students okay that is one step i have increased okay now i will just simplify i will substitute n is equal to 0 to infinity that is what the work i have to do here now so i'll just put here n is equal to 0 so n is equal to 0 as you know any value to the power 0 is always 1 so as you have can see 
In the right hand side, I will be telling you all the details and formulas, definitions, which I'm going to use in this equation. So therefore, this is start with one plus. Now, I will substitute n is equal to one. So therefore, this is going to become z upon a raised to minus one plus. Substitute n is equal to two, z upon a raised to minus two plus so on is it clear so as you remember this is we have sum of infinite terms so therefore sum of infinite terms you have to remember this ones terms that is one plus d plus d square this one formula you use one divided by 1 minus d okay 1 minus d so this formula i will use d i am going to take here d is equal to z upon a okay z upon a raised to minus 1 so i will use this formula so very simple formula i am using here this is equal to 1 divided by 1 minus z upon a raised to minus n so what i have done here friends just i have taken this one plus z upon a raised to minus one plus z upon a raised to minus two i have just substituted this is equal to one upon here in the right hand side you can just see one divided by one minus d so this already we know this is sum of infinite terms of geometric progression i think you have studied geometric progression directly i have given the formula okay please remember the geometric progression so i will substitute and get the answer now just remaining part is simplification so this is equal to i'll just simplify this i'll take this inverse as like this one upon a upon z that will be simple what i have done i have just taken this z upon a raised to minus one as a upon z raised to plus one this is going to become plus one because i have reversed denominator has came to numerator numerator has came to denominator okay so now i will simplify this ones i will take here lcm i will multiply here z so this is one divided by z minus a divided by this is z so z i have taken here lcm now i will just for simplification i will bring this z in the numerator so therefore you can see as one z of a raised to n is given as z upon z minus a so this is how you are going to use the z transformation front is it clear any doubt yes friends any doubt in this example so direct one formula is given substitute a n u n as a n you are going to substitute use this sum of infinite series of geometric progression substitute it in the value that is we are going to get here one divided by one minus d simplify you will get z of a raised to n is equal to z upon z minus a now please remember take down this as formula also friends so very very important if i ask you yes uh, kalyan if i ask you that z of a raised to n is what you should tell that z divided by z minus a is the formula is it clear okay yes, so like sir. this you should remember the formula also yes beta okay <laughs> so like this we have solved that z of a raised to n is equal to z upon z minus a so this is a simple example we have so next we will go to the some particular cases okay we just see substituting this values okay so here again same way we will have particular cases but i will show you by using z transformation how you are going to get the answer i think you have got the answer already and i substitute here only in the above example if i take a n is equal to one you get the answer but by using z transformation how you are going to solve i will show you so particular case you can write down this one so this is equal to summation n zero to infinity right now please remember you are going to put here put u n is equal to one so this is one and z raised to minus n where i have substituted this friends in the 
in this definition of a z transform so this is our z transform definition z of un is equal to summation n 0 to infinity un z raised to minus n so that i have done here so okay now let's just simplify yes so this is equal to i'll just simplify this summation n 0 to infinity 1 divided by z raised to n so what i have done here minus n i have taken in the denominator it is going to become plus n now i'll just substitute as i told you substitute here n is equal to 0 1 2 3 4 right so when i substitute n is equal to 0 you just see any power raised to 0 is always 1 so keep this in your mind students very very important plus now 1 divided by z raised to 1 plus 1 divided by z square so i am substituting n is equal to 0 n is equal to 1 n is equal to 2 and so on so please use the formula already you have seen this is our formula sum of infinite series right in terms of geometric progression is 1 divided by 1 minus d so please remember what will be d here now d is equal to 1 upon z okay therefore i'll substitute this is 1 divided by 1 minus 1 upon z okay if you further simplify again you take lcm multiply here z 1 into z will be z z minus 1 okay so you will get here i'll just move this here this side so this is going to become 1 upon z minus 1 divided by z so next step you remember please z i'm going to take in the numerator therefore z of 1 is equal to this is z divided by z minus 1 so therefore you can just see very easily directly also you can take just substitute here a raised to n is equal to 1 z divided by z minus 1 so therefore this answer is correct so you can see direct substitution also you can do also by using definition of z transformation you can simplify students okay so write down next i will take another one z of k okay let us see what will, i will get here z of k so this is equal to as you see k is some constant term is there so what i do i will take out z of k as z i will take outside so this is going to become k of yes z of 1 so therefore you can directly simplify also so therefore i will take z as it is z of 1 i will substitute yes again same way you will get so z of 1 you know already here students you already taken here z divided by z minus 1 so i will substitute here that value z upon z minus 1 so which is equal to k z divided by z minus 1 very very simple yes, students so every time you can just see every Whatever I am deriving here in the Z transformation, this is used in the next example. So very, very important. Student. So please note down and write it down and practice it very well. Now I will go to the next one. Again, they have given particular case Z of minus 1 raised to N. So again, I will use, be using... Um, definition of Z transformation here, students. So Z transformation of minus 1 raised to N, please substitute in this, A is equal to minus 1. So Z of A raised to N, we know already, Z divided by Z minus 1. Just I will substitute, wherever A is there, I am going to substitute minus 1. So just put here, A is equal to minus 1. Therefore, this is Z divided by z of minus a is minus 1 so if you simplify this this is going to become z divided by z plus 1 so this is our answer yes very well you can just see these are all particular cases z of 1 z of k z of minus 1 raised to n so these are 
keep this in your mind that you are going to use this formulas for the exam per students okay so keep practicing okay now i will go to z of n raised to p so this is very very important students here i will take now yes mm, same procedure again but please remember this is quite different so i will i cannot solve this directly therefore i will solve by using some trick so by definition yes runs by definition of z transform what i am going to substitute u n is equal to n raised to p i am going to substitute okay so let us substitute so i will get here z of n raised to p is equal to summation n 0 to infinity right i'll substitute now n raised to p this is u n u n is nothing but n raised to p therefore n raised to p into z raised to minus n so therefore i have substituted u n is equal to n raised to p here but uh, you can just see you cannot simplify this directly so what i will do for my simplification i will take one previous value so previous value i will take this as instead of p i will take p minus 1 and try to simplify okay so now i will take here u n is equal to n raised to p minus 1 okay so taking u n is equal to n raised to p students you can just see this is going to become z of n raised to p minus 1 is equal to summation n 0 to infinity n raised to p minus 1 z raised to minus 1 so what i have done just replacing p to p minus 1 so okay so i want to simplify z of n raised to p so what all things i am going to do is yes, just see here so what i do here differentiate this differentiating with respect to z so wherever z is there i am going to differentiate this okay so differentiation i will take like this d upon dz right z of n is to p minus 1 i will keep it as it is no change here and then i am going to differentiate this here you can just see what are constants are there leaving this z all are constant so i'll take here n is equal to n summation n 0 to infinity as it is no change in here n raised to p minus 1 i will keep it as it is only i'm going to differentiating z so z raised to minus n i'm going to differentiate so please remember what is the differentiation of x raised to n please anyone yes students please tell me what is the formula for differentiation of x raised to n minus 1 yes beta you are right it is n x raised to n minus 1 simple formula i will use now so for z raised to minus n just see this is i am going to write this as minus n z raised to minus n minus 1 so n is replaced with minus n and x is replaced with z okay so this formula i will use okay this is quite easy you can very easily simplify this this line is not going okay here it goes fine so therefore i will simplify this now this is going to become summation n 0 to infinity n raised to p minus 1 there is no change ha huh? i will be changing only this part that is i am going to substitute this as minus n z raised to minus n minus 1 so i have just used this formula so formula always i will be writing on right hand side please remember this what formulas are there what are changes i am going to do everything i am will be writing on the right hand side okay now i will simplify this runs okay now i can just see this value mm, why this line is okay in this value you can very easily see that i want only n terms in this summation remaining terms i will keep it outside so just you can just see this n raised to p minus 1 this p minus 1 i can write this as n raised to p n raised to minus 1 i will simplify like this okay same way z raised to minus n minus 1 is there i will be writing this as z raised to minus n 
into z raised to minus 1 just law of indices i will be using and i will just simplify this so that only n part i will keep it in this summation remaining part i will keep it outside so here go we go this is summation n 0 to infinity this is n n n it is not possible to write n properly okay just wait i will write n n base to p minus 1 okay again this is p and this is n base to minus 1 is there in the bracket minus n i will keep minus n no change ha huh? minus n i have kept as it is this is z raised to minus n z raised to minus 1 also please remember if we have n and its inverse it is always equal to 1 so n inverse or n raised to minus 1 into n will be always one student that i will substitute here in this but please remember this is minus is there right so therefore this is going to become minus 1 so minus i will take it outside so i don't want here minus sign okay so i will take here minus outside and as you can see in this there is z raised to minus 1 which doesn't contain n term so this i will keep it outside i don't want this in the summation okay so minus i have taken outside this is going to get cancel and z raised to minus 1 also i'm going to take outside what is remaining in this bracket now in this summation where n is equal to 0 to infinity is there that is n raised to p and this is z raised to minus n so why i have done this differentiation i will tell you right now so you can see this summation n 0 to infinity n raised to p z raised to minus n i have got summation n 0 to infinity n raised to p z raised to minus n is nothing but z of n raised to p that i will substitute so here i will get here what i will get here friends this is equal to minus z raised to minus 1 i will keep it inside this term now this is nothing but our z of n raised to p actually therefore i will just substitute z of n raised to p now please remember i want z of n raised to p right i want to calculate z of n raised to p so what i will bring this term i will bring this side so you are already what is written this is d upon dz is there okay z n raised to n raised to p minus 1 is there already into this minus will come this side minus and z inverse is going to become z because i am taking this side so this z raised to minus 1 if i bring it on right hand side to left hand side it is going to become plus 1 so this is equal to z of n raised to p student so or i'll just write this as therefore z of n raised to p is equal to minus z i will write as it is minus z d upon dz this is z n raised to p minus 1 okay so here we have calculated z of n raised to p by using simple tricks please remember this is very very important students okay so like this you should able to simplify this z transformation okay so finish till 3 right we'll move to the next one any doubt is there please ask me students in this any doubt okay, what i have done i have used the definition of z transformation un is equal to z raised to n raised to p substitute because i cannot solve this directly so therefore i have taken here un is equal to n raised to p minus 1 so after taking this i have just differentiated simplified so that i got it z raised to z of n raised to p so therefore also remember this as formula z of n raised to p is equal to minus z into d upon dz z into n raised to p minus 1 remember this formula students okay now again we will continue now this is z of n is there so we'll just substitute in this yes now this is quite easy see z of n you can simplify this here students we can take here directly p is equal to 
1. Okay, so let us take p is equal to 1. So I will take here put p is equal to 1. So therefore, this is going to become z of n is going to become trans. Yes, I will take write the same formula here and substitute the values now. Yes, this is minus z wherever n p is there. I'm going to substitute one. Huh? Remember d upon dz as it is in the bracket. This is z n raised to one minus one. So z raised to n one minus one is zero. So therefore, this is going to become. Therefore, this is going to become minus z of this is n raised to z of n raised to p. So I will keep this as z of d upon dz. This is so n raised to minus one, n raised to zero. Now this is this is going to become one. So therefore, this is equal to minus z as it is d upon dz but tell me what is z of one is yes we have already calculated what is z transformation of one yes please remember now as i told you whatever we are solving right now the we are going to use this as formula for the next example so you please remember the formula z of one is equal to z divided by z minus one okay i will substitute don't worry so i am using z of 1 i will write it here z of 1 is equal to z divided by z minus 1 i'll just substitute this value this is z divided by z minus 1 students okay now simplify i think you have come across this differentiation yes mm, i'll take this as z u divided by v rule i think you remember this is equal to what is u divided by v? Keep v as it is. Differentiate u minus u as it is. Differentiate v divided by v square. Differentiation we are going to use here, students. Okay, so don't get confused here, students. So many of them will get confused why this line is coming again and again. Okay, this is equal to so minus z no change differentiation so i will do the differentiation in this okay so i will keep here v as it is v we have z minus one as it is into differentiation of z that is i will write this z okay it will be one only okay so minus here i will take now z as it is differentiation of z minus one divided by v square that is z minus one the whole square so here we are going to simplify till this i will maybe keep it down okay now you simplify this one this is equal to minus z i will keep it as it is no change here okay here also z minus one as it is no change differentiation of z is one so please remember differentiation of z with respect to z is one minus here z as it is now differentiation of z minus 1 d is nothing but please take this d is nothing but again don't get confused what sir has written here d d is nothing but differentiation okay so this is 1 minus 0 0 because differentiation of 1 is 0 that is constant divided by as it is z minus 1 square as it is no change okay quite lengthy but uh, you can just see you will get this as minus z as it is so open the bracket students this will be z minus 1 minus z divided by z minus 1 the whole square further you can see c z and z will get cancelled minus into minus will become plus okay so therefore z of n is equal to z divided by z minus 1 the whole square is it clear students any doubt please ask me i will just repeat this once again just look at the screen z of n we have to calculate i'm going to take this formula z of n raised to p is equal to minus z d upon dz z of n raised to 
p minus 1. So I will be substituting the value here. p is equal to 1. So what I get? Minus z, d upon dz, z of 1. z of 1 we know already is that transformation of 1 is z upon z minus 1. Just substitute here. Then as usual differentiation u divided by v rule I'm going to use. Then after simplifying, you are going to get this z of n is equal to z divided by z minus 1 the whole square student so please note down any doubt is there please ask me students don't keep your doubt with yourself yes students still if you have any doubt i have given all the formulas on the right hand side and all the terms whatever i have used everything i am writing yes still if you have any doubt please ask me yes students any doubt please unmute and tell me Okay, so we will continue this for n of, uh, sorry, z of n square. So you can just see I have given here, this formula is known as recurrence formula for n raised to p that uh, already in this example I have solved. Also, I'm giving the z of n raised to p is equal to minus z d upon dz, z of n raised to p minus 1. Same thing we have done. Here by taking z of n raised to p, then they have taken z of n raised to p minus 1. Simplified, we got the answer. Uh, next, we have multiplication by n. Yes, students, we are going to do now multiplication by n. Same way, students, again, use the definition of z transformation. Yes, please remember the definition of z transformation that is z of un is equal to summation n. 0 to infinity u n z raised to minus n. So I will just write here z of u n is equal to summation n 0 to infinity u n z raised to minus n. Just substitute here a n u n. Okay, then you are going to substitute here n u n. That is what they have done in this step. Next step again go for differentiating so again i cannot solve this directly therefore i differentiate this so when you differentiate you will get this step so already this i have done differentiation um here i have done in this step when you differentiate you will get this value okay so same step they have done so this derivation why i am showing is because all the formulas what are there they are all proved already okay so therefore you will get this simplification then you will differentiate this d upon dz z raised to minus n so you will get this step yes further when you simplify this already we have done this same steps they have used then when you simplify further you will get z of n into u n is equal to minus z d upon dz z of u n so please remember this multiplication by n okay this we have done z of n is equal to z upon z minus 1 the whole square see by using this we, it is quite easy because n is equal to 0 is there here they have used and simplified z of n we have already done yes z of n square is also done with the same similar steps use the recurrence formula again students differentiate this yes i'll just show you one two steps so you want to prove this, then you can just take by definition of Z transform. You are going to take UN is equal to N square. Then Z of N square is given you to simplify Z summation N zero to infinity N square Z raised to minus one. This is how you can simplify and you will get this answer. Don't worry. This is quite easy. Just substitute the values now. Yes, now you can just use this recurrence formula that is z of n raised to p is equal to minus z d upon dz z of n raised to p minus 1. So here you are going to just substitute very simple p is equal to 2. So you can just see when you substitute n is equal to sorry p is equal to 2 if you substitute you will get the value that is z of n square which is equal to as i told you that previous formulas are used for the next 
formula. So therefore, this is z. N raised to p minus one was there. P is two, two minus one. So I'll just take two minus one here. It is one. Okay. So you can further simplify very easily. Z of n. So already we have done z of n. I will show you. Z of n we have solved. Z of n is equal to z upon z minus one the whole square. Just substitute. Same way, differentiate it. You are going to get this as yes. Here we get z of n square is equal to z square plus z z minus one the whole cube. You can try, no doubt. You can try yourself, friends. Very easily you will get this answer. If you don't get this answer, please tell me. Then I will solve. Okay. Just differentiation of z upon z minus one the whole square. So what we have here again differentiate with respect to u divided by v same same step steps are there so I am showing it directly so z of n square is equal to z square plus z divided by z minus one the whole cube you can do it very easily okay those these are the simple formulas these are yes please take this as formulas and we will be using this formula to solve the examples so formulas are already proved. Now we will move to the properties of Z transform. Very simple property we have. The first property is the linearity property. What it says here, students, Z of A U N plus B V N is equal to A Z U N plus B Z V N. So again, not bothered about uh, de derivation, but still have shown that it is proved by using the Z transformation. So U N you are going to take A U N plus B V N substitute. Then you can just see summation is taken for a u n z raised to minus n, and summation is taken for b v n plus z minus n. Then is is simple by using definition of uh, z transformation. This summation n zero to infinity u n z raised to minus. I'll write here summation n is equal to zero to infinity u n z raised to minus n. Uh, depending on the function, this is going to become z of u n. And next, we have taken z uh, summation n zero to infinity v n z raised to minus n. Depending on the function, this is going to become by using the definition of z transformation z of v n that we have substituted here, and we got the answer of that is linearity property satisfied. Same way, we are going to use that is scale change of scale or we also say this as the damping rule. So please remember, change of scale is nothing but damping rule. Damping rule is nothing but change of scale. So what it says, yes, it says that it states if z of u n is given as u of z, then z of a raised to minus n u n is going to become u of a z. Means wherever there is a raised to minus n u n is there, you have to Simplify this in terms of a z, whatever is there. Okay, that I will show you in the example. It is very simple. And z of a is to n u n is going to become u of z upon a. So this is quite easy. <coughs> so proof they have given here directly. So I will just show you one two steps. Not required, but you should know to how you, you got the proof. Proof of the damping rule or change of scale. Okay. So here you will be taking u n as a raised to minus n u n in the definition of z transform. Therefore, you can just see this is going to become z of a raised to minus n u n. I'm just going to put this in definition. Okay, this is equal to summation n zero to infinity a raised to minus n u n z raised to minus n. So I have just substituted this value. Therefore, this is equal to summation n zero to infinity. I will take u n this side and a z raised to minus n. So what I have taken a raised to minus n I have taken z raised to minus n. Combining it is going to give you a z raised to minus n. That is simple I have done. So definitely you can just see this is nothing but u of a z. Is it clear? So this is by definition again. Same way they have told you z of a raised to n u n is equal to u of z upon a. So just see this how they have given. Okay, I will just simplify the same way. So you can just I will write it in this side a little bit. I will take it this side. Okay, just I will move this side. Okay, so here I am going to put 
so you should know the derivation also this is a u n now i'm going to put so using the definition of z transformation this is a u n is equal to summation n 0 to infinity n a u n i have substituted and this is z raised to minus n as it is only this term you have to substitute everywhere please remember this is our z transformation so this is equal to summation n 0 to infinity i will keep u n i will keep as it is now here you can just see this is a raised to n is there plus n is there here they have given minus n this is plus n so how i can write this as minus n just remember a raised to i want n n to be a raised to minus n so just i'll write a raised to 1 divided by a raised to minus n just i'll substitute a raised to n is equal to 1 upon a raised to minus n no problem so therefore i will combine this z upon a raised to minus n so therefore this is u of z of a that's it okay that's only one step is they have not given so i can show you u of z upon a strong. therefore this is damping rule and this is linear property please keep these properties in your mind student same way we have shifting property yes you can go through the, the derivation not required but please remember z of u n minus k is equal to z raised to minus k z of u n where k is positive integer this is property very very important and left shifting property so if k is a positive integer z of u k plus 1 will be equal to z raised to k in the bracket z of u n minus u naught minus u1 upon z minus u2 upon z square and so on till u k minus 1 upon z k minus 1 student. so we can derive this very easily by using the z transformation but here we are not interested in the derivation okay so by using the particular values we can just see uh, z of u now here they have given in this they have substituted k is equal to 1 you get z of z u n minus u naught and here they have substituted yes z of u n plus 2 is equal to z square z of u n minus u naught minus u 1 upon z can you tell me for z is equal to 3 uh, sorry k is equal to 3 if they substitute in this formula so you will get it like this please remember this is z of u n plus 3 so three terms you are going to get that is z square z of u n minus u naught minus u1 upon z minus u2 upon z square so therefore this is for k is equal to 3 you can continue this so but for our study we have restricted towards k is equal to 3 also uh, we are restricted towards 3 k is equal to 3 k is equal to 1 2 and 3 we are going to use in the examples friends okay so this is all the brief idea about z transformation uh, don't get confused okay so this example we are going to solve this friends okay this, this is a little bit lengthy so what i will do i will continue this example in the next class okay so otherwise i have still time right yes till 11 40 right the time is uh, okay so i think you have next class so we'll continue in the next class run shall we continue in the next class or shall we continue still five minutes i have okay so you can solve this find z transform of cos n theta and sin n theta yes students you are there in the class nobody is responding okay little bit this is example from this example is very very important see that you practice this example students okay so i will just solve this example within two minutes you can just see see one formula is given definition is there use it you are going to get the answer okay just see here find z transform of cos n theta and sin n theta students okay we are just going to take this 
for to simplify this i remember that we know that what we know yes we know that e raised to i theta can anybody tell me what is the e raised to i theta we used to take yes anyone no idea okay so i will tell you this is cos theta plus i sin theta yes students is it clear yes kartik is there yes sir okay so please responding ha huh? yes muzammil is there muzammil beta are you there mazin mazin mohammad madhe mazin is there okay so please be in the class otherwise i will put them absent those who don't respond okay i have done already yes sir ha uh, okay e raised to i theta is equal to cos theta plus i sin theta you are going to take so that i will solve this in one example only i will be solving cos n theta and sin n theta very very important example the students i tell you you are going to get this example and by using this solving this example you are going to use the same formulas from this okay so they will be asking here cos i by 4 right cos 90 they will be asking so we will just see how we will solve this now okay so what i have to take now i will take this z transformation of this term but please see cos n theta they have given therefore i will just simplify this as z of e raised to minus i n theta i will take okay so that this will be helpful me to simplify the cos n theta and sin n theta so again just see instead of solving like this i will just take cos i n theta will become cos n theta plus i sin n theta so i will take theta only now okay by using this formula i can write in this term so i will take this as minus okay this is minus if you take minus you are going to get here this will be minus only so i will take minus in terms of minus only i will take okay to for make easy this problem i have taken e raised to minus i n theta so this is equal to you can just simplify this friends so i will just modify this z of e raised to i theta i will take raised to minus n can anybody tell me why i have done because i know the e raised to minus n formula therefore e raised to i theta raised to minus n i have taken okay then into 1 i will take for the simplification okay from so now i will just simplify this so this is equal to z of this is e raised to i theta raised to minus n into 1 okay so i don't have any direct formula so i will be using a raised to minus n formula so i think i have given here a raised to minus n where is that a raised to minus n ah this is z divided by z minus a so here i will be taking instead of uh, this is that example hmm. e raised to i theta i am going to take this as minus n 
okay so i will just simplify this runs till here everyone have understood why i have taken this e raised to minus i theta because i want cos theta minus i sin theta cos theta i wanted to calculate and sin theta i wanted to calculate so therefore i have taken here e raised to minus i n theta which is equal to cos n theta is there and cos sin n theta is there so therefore i have made use of this e raised to minus i n theta is it clear students okay now just substitute the values now okay so i will be using this z of i will be taking now this is for linear property i will use this is going to become z of e raised to i theta divided by z of e raised to i theta minus 1 is it clear students any doubt please ask me yes students any doubt if you are getting confused i will skip this step you use directly that formula so this formula will become a raised to minus n formula you use what it says it says z upon z minus e raised to i theta you get at least you remember that formula z of a raised to minus n formula that is z upon z minus e that is what we have done already done so we'll take this only so this is equal to so i want to simplify this so what i can do okay so i'll just multiply and divide by z minus e is to minus i theta i will take so that my work is reduced okay now just see here so therefore this is equal to simplify this values friends e raised to minus i theta i have already written the formula here so here i wanted the formula therefore i have written e raised to minus i theta is nothing but cos theta minus i sin theta just substitute so z i will keep it as it is in the bracket z minus i will write this as cos theta minus i sin theta okay therefore i substitute this divided by here simplify z i will multiply in this bracket this is going to become z square minus z into e raised to i theta then this is minus now my mi, uh, minus e raised to i theta will take minus e raised to i theta into z minus into minus plus e raised to i theta so this is minus is then please note down e raised to minus i theta so what i have done here i have multiplied and divided by z minus e raised to minus i theta okay so that i have simplified easily can simplify this one so this is equal to yes this is i will simplify and substitute this z inside this bracket this is going to become z square minus this is z cos theta minus into minus plus and this z is going to become plus i z sin theta divided by yes you can simplify this so this term e raised to i theta into e raised to minus i theta is going to become 1 please remember this is inverse of e raised to i theta is inverse of e raised to minus i theta which is equal to 1 and this simplification how you will do this i will tell you in this side i will take it right hand side i will take here so z i will take outside no doubt z i will take outside so this is going to become e raised to i theta i theta plus e raised to minus i theta so i will take minus also outside yes friends now i can just see please remember e raised to i theta plus e raised to minus i theta is always 2 cos theta 
so this value i will substitute so therefore this is z square minus z e raised to i theta plus e raised to minus i theta plus one this value will substitute to cos theta so therefore this is equal to z square minus z cos theta plus i z sin theta just one minute z square minus z two cos theta plus one that's it so here we have the z transformation of e raised to i minus i n theta so here you can just take this as z of e raised to minus i n theta i will take here so i can write this as now z of cos n theta use the formula students minus i sin n theta it is quite lengthy so don't get confused so here i can just split this in terms of real part and imaginary part so i'll just take this as z square minus z cos theta divided by z square minus 2z cos theta plus 1 plus i z sin theta divided by z square minus 2z cos theta plus 1 so therefore we can easily take real part real part and imaginary part so that's the answer students so real part we have here cos n theta which is equal to z square minus z cos theta divided by z square minus 2z cos theta plus 1 and sin n theta will be equal to z sin theta divided by z square minus 2z cos theta plus 1 so it is quite lengthy i will repeat this if you, it is possible in the next class students is it clear any doubt please ask me yes students any doubt no doubt then we will continue in the next class yes students thank you so much thank you having patience to